with Zach Posen and uh, we're behind the scenes. We're behind the stairs at his Target launch. We're and in between. We're in between the Buildings. stairs and, and tell me tell me why you like this as a refuge from this party tonight. Well, it's What's cool. Going yeah. Air is, is a big component of yeah. that airflow. Um, What's going on out there? Well, I'd like to have real conversations with people in life. So, um, you know, to be in a party context where, you know, one, you know, I'm meeting performers you know, that are supposedly friends, but, you know, supporters are people that have been following it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a very strange thing to give interviews in phony places. I don't take my, um, my fans or the fashion community uh, that lightly. I think they do. They deserve, uh, you know, true honesty and reality. That's why we're back here in yeah, the VIP exactly. room. That's why we're here in so, a refuge. So let's talk, at the, talk about the looks. I'll start out with the girls on the couch, the VIP girls. Um, yeah. You know, you got Maggie Gyllenhaal, yeah. who's kind of black and white. I, I mean, it looks like kind of a 1950s inspired it's look It's cool. She's me. wearing collection. She's wearing a slip from collection, which I think is okay, really so cool. Okay, so you slip that in there, the collection look. So who's wearing the Target look? So the Target looks, Claire's wearing a Target gown. Which is a long, Which is you the first gown it. they've ever made. It's a it's long red. gown. We created this Warholian safety print, Paisley print. Paisley print originally is the mango leaf pattern. When I went to the town of Paisley in England, it became the Paisley print. So we thought that was cool with safety pins. It added a punk element mm -hmm. to sort of this colorful glamour. So where are the safety pins? Because she looked pretty cool together to me. The safety pins are in the print. It's okay. all made out of safety prints, sort of laid out with different sort of uh, silkscreen-esque blotches over it, their signatures hidden in there. So there are no actual safety pins in the dress? In the dress? No, there's safety pins, ZP logos inside the text. And how much will that cost the woman in America? Uh, that dress costs $69.99. That's a great bargain. So glamour at $69.99, I think that's just a dream, I mean. So how did, how did it that... It is still expensive. Well, 60, 70 bucks is still expensive. Considering you, how much would be one of your regular gowns? Like if you had uh, a gown or probably our starting gown is at 1100. You know, it's an idea of a look. Yeah. There's no comparison. Yeah. You know, our top line is of the fat, highest fabrications, usually very subtly and obscurely. And for my own pleasure and my designer's pleasure, some kind of feat of construction that is very subtle that we get off on. Okay, so what was the most fun? I know there's a big difference between collection and yeah, target. You don't have to tell no, me. No, I know, but you know. But know for, what was the most fun about designing this collection for you? The dream for me was really uh, seeing the capabilities of commerce and seeing the capabilities of globalization. Uh, and the I, I, this is a quote I use, so it's not original, but the beauty of globalization. I've you know, grown my business for 10 years, hearing about uh, you know, different ways to make clothing, what the future is, so let's test it to the extreme level. Let's work with their manufacturers. I, wanted, I was dreaming for years to work with Lian Fung and also with Oxford Industries. They're, they're, uh, Where are they based? They're based, well, they have headquarters here in New York, but they produce clothing sort of for all levels of the market. Any line that looks fab, that's made well, they make it, and their small team does it. And uh, that was a dream to work with them, developing the fabrications, uh, you know, small things. To work with a felted t-shirt and rubber in one thing, that's something I could never do in my collection. So it's small pleasures. So wait, wait, before, before I move on to the last two small questions. Small pleasures in life, like using jelly print. You yeah. okay? Look, if somebody's okay, not somebody, dead, somebody, we're gonna keep going. Somebody might be dead, I hope they're okay, but anyhow. Um, so you got to use rubber? Yeah, rubber Who's printing, clear, sparkly rubber gel and felt. So how long will this stuff last? Let's be realistic, be honest. I'm gonna say I go out there and I buy something with like rubber or felt. How long last? Will it last? Yeah. Oh, it's gonna age really well, like any vintage rock t-shirt. Okay, good, I to, mean, know, good to know. Like that. any Star Wars t-shirt, we, we use the same compounds. Fabulous. But it's on a stretchier cotton, thinner cotton. You know, we wanted to, you know, use cotton that was nicer than whatever, you know, a girl, you know, desires from, you know, the best of the best it's from uh, you know, James Pierce to American Apparel, you know, and you know, it's using these different multi-referential things to just create a really cute hot wardrobe. It's it's to the point. Uh, you know, not trying to create a creative theme out of the whole thing. Because really, you have the prom dress on sale. The prom there. is the theme. This is about timing. I started this collection with, I got the full market research of sales of Target. That's how I wanted to design the collection. Mm -hmm. This was about, uh, you know, creating the biggest sell-through collection they've ever done. They've distributed it 
into more doors than they've ever done with a designer what? collaboration. I wanted to rise to the challenge. Why did you decide to put the prom dress on Selma? Because she told me out there that she was feeling a little bit long in the tooth wearing it. I think she looks fabulous. She looked pretty hot to me. Yeah, I think she Louis looks hot. And a little ruffle dress. Listen, she was having a lot of fun. No, I think she was saying that uh, we spoke about it earlier in my yeah. home that uh, you know this she would have had a freak out if she had been a teenager going to her prom wearing that. I think she felt well, she's kind bad. of anti prom person. We're sort of all anti prom as as, well, as we're bubbly and cute right as we now. are, and we're in the stairwell at my prom. Exactly. So speaking of that, let's just wrap it up. And should say, we should we slowly enter the party? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. That'll be the second That's the video. That's the hardest question. Um, here are the two things I want to ask you. Um, you find this thing called fashion tame and look up, Zachy. You're too cute to look down. Sorry. Um, fashion tame it. It's like, you know, what this party is pretty fashion tame it. Yeah. So, uh, so you're kind of, are you kind of making fun of your own term? Of course, it's always about making fun of your. It's always about using your own term before somebody else uses it, uh, creating the experience before somebody else starts to create it. Uh, you know, fashion is about working on instinct. Yeah. You know, being an artist is about instinct and being on the moment. Uh, not being scared of, of laying something down and going for it. Uh, I'm not. So you I'm, decided I'm to end it out because you have flowers, you got champagne, you got chocolate, you got movie I'm stars. I'm playing my own cliches dresses. and I'm playing my own rules. Okay, and last question on this, and then we'll enter the party. Um, Zach, you and I have known each other since you broke out of Central St. Yeah. Mark's. If you had to wrap it up in a few sentences, what have you learned about fashion from then until now? What's the mo what are some of the maybe two or three of the wow, most important things? What have I learned in fashion? It's a lot since we've known each lot, other. But like, what's if you had to wrap it up? Say, hey, you uh, know fashion's what? about uh, you know fashion. You know, I am so lucky, really, to work in in a medium that I can support my 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 creative ventures and my business ventures. Um, it is fast, it's uh, non-forgiving, it's um, very passive as a, as a world and as an industry, as a creative How is process. it passive? It seems quite dynamic. I mean, there's shows it, it, all the time. It's in cycle. It's such a repetitive cycle that, uh, sorry. <laughs> is that your fault? It's a competitive, it's a repetitive cycle. Uh, so you learn the waves of it. It's very, for me at this stage, it's predictable, and I try to keep it unpredictable. Okay, so for that's myself, by changing it, by keeping it evolving, by taking risks, by failing, by having successes. This is what's part of it: safety and banality, and, and trend, or by following or trying to fit into what is hot at the moment, or what is created as hot. It's not the goal here. It's about creating your own voice. Someone starting out again, somebody who's like 20 years old, would you say go on Project Runway or what would you advise that person to do? Because it's changed a lot. Somebody with a star and talent? Um, I think one could use Project Runway and take that to the next level and really, really become a star from that. I don't think we've yet had the next star of Project yeah. Runway to a major level. Uh, if I were a designer struggling right now who has a business who's been in the Vogue Fashion Fund, mm -hmm. which I never did. Uh, you know, I would enter Project Runway and be a coup. Um, I think it's about using media and making it happen and not and the following internet, the rules. Using and the internet is all about key. God, I wish I had more budget to build on internet. That's the dream. Uh, that's, you know, that's the communicating tool. All right, well, let's go to the party. Thank you for being a communicator, Susan. Absolutely. I love you, babe. I love you, too.